I'm Chosen Architect, and this is my modded adventure. So some new changes have came to the mod pack, and well, we could call this, a, let's say, an Enderman invasion, because, well, we now have some new Enderman variants that you can potentially find in the world. And it's pretty darn cool, because these Endermen drop different items. They can drop some different Ender Pearls or even drop some biome-specific loot. Now, with these new Endermen that have invited themselves into this world, I feel like they're starting to invade from the end. And I think we should probably do a visit to the end, and uh, I think we should probably start prepping for that. If they're going to invade my world, I'm going to invade theirs. But it is going to take a little bit of preparation, because right now, we have magic weapons. And you know what the Enderman is resistant to? Magic. So, I don't think we're going to be dealing a whole lot of damage with our magic-based weaponry. But there is some really fantastic weapons that we have access to. We just need to craft them up. Now, when I mean awesome and powerful weapons, I'm looking at you, Cyclic. Cyclic right here has some very powerful swords, up to 14.5 damage on the base on a crystal sword. And also, the armor is very powerful as well. Now, to make these swords and to make these this equipment, we are going to need this crystallized obsidian. This stuff is pretty important. And to get the crystallized obsidian, we need liquid slime. And then also, to make uh, this, we're going to need crystallized amber. All of these things cost different materials, such as liquid magma. Um, and to get liquid magma, we need to sort of melt down magma cream. So all of these things sort of combined together, we, we're going to notice that there's a couple of machines that are required in order for these processes. One is a solidification chamber, and this is going to cost some power, and it's not too bad to make. And then we also have the melting chamber, in which this is also not too bad to make, but it does all require a bit of obsidian. Now, after making these two things, it is going to set off our quests. And over here on tech, we get access to the solidification and melting chamber. And we get ourselves a little bit of a friend, a familiar friend right here, the torch launcher. I love this thing. Uh, and uh, it allows you to shoot torches inside of caves, lighting all of the cave areas up. Oh, it's a, it's a handy tool. Definitely worth keeping in the bag. Um, now, with these two things set up, I will need to power them, and then I'm also going to need a way to transfer fluids back and forth between these two machines. So right here is the melter, and then we're going to have the solidification chamber. Now, I'm going to place some gates on them, and this is going to start to store power in them. And most of this stuff is going to be done by hand for right now, uh, but I do need to get those basic liquids in here and figure out how do I transfer a liquid from here into the solidification chamber. And I think this would be a good time to show off a good friend. This is going to be laser IO. I think this would be a good way to transfer a fluid from one side to another. And with this being right in the middle, it's gonna be a pretty simple process. For this setup, we're just going to need a few things. A laser IO node, we're gonna need two fluid cards, and that's really it. Uh, because we're just going to be transferring a fluid from this side to this side, we place down the laser node, and we can access the side that we want to interact with. In this case, we could open it up, and we can see that the melting chamber is connected to the north side, and we can click this and place ourselves a fluid card. Now, on the south side, we see the solidification chamber, and we can place this. This is actually a new feature that was added, and I absolutely love this now about laser I.O. It makes it so easy to see what things are connected to what side. Now... Whenever we activate this, right now you can see the lasers, but it's not really doing anything. Um, we need to tell the side that we want to pull, we need to tell it to pull. So we need to change this from an insert to an extract. And just by default, it's going to be relatively quick. This is every 20 ticks, it's going to try and pull a full bucket out. You can lower this or increase it, however you feel. Uh, but for right now, that should be more than enough. And I guess there's only one way to try this out, right? We just, we need to test it. So let's go ahead and throw a magma block in here and we'll see it solidify. And the fluid went in here, but now the fluid had immediately been sent over here. Um, so just showing that this laser ion O node is a fantastic way to pipe things around. And if you wanted to extend a laser IO node to another location, 
Well, to do that, you would just need to link it to another node. Then you can go up to eight blocks away. Um, so just showing you, there's not much to laser IO here, but you'd use a laser wrench to connect two nodes together and then it would act as one network. And if you wanted to extend that range even further, you could put laser connectors in between. And there's a new connector now that also works cross-dimensionally. If we wanted to extend your network all the way to cross to another dimension, you can use an advanced laser connector. It does get a little bit more expensive though, as it does require ender pearls and all kinds of other goodies. For now, this should be more than enough. Uh, this seems to make an entire bucket. So let's put like 16 worth in the solidification chamber and let's see how many of the amber crystals we can make. Now, if you used honey instead of the liquid magma, we'd be able to use magma blocks instead of redstone and saving us on a little bit of redstone. But if we put a fire charge redstone and gold in here, that is going to produce that amber that we need. Two of them, in fact. And then we will need to convert this. This is going to use some liquid slime here. Uh, if we have some amethyst crystals in this particular configuration with some emeralds, and we can make that crystallized obsidian. And these have so many uses. They're used for all of these awesome charms, some heart canisters. All of these things can be incredibly powerful and useful. Oh man, even the Madoc. The Madoc is great. It's a three by three mining tool that will last you forever. All of these things are great. Now with the Amber, we can make a ton of things such as this block randomizer that'll allow you to place blocks and shuffle them around like we've done uh, with many other mods in here. Uh, and then we have wireless transfer of items. You can transfer items with this wireless transfer node. There's also a fluid and redstone node that you can use to transfer wirelessly. That's a pretty cool mechanic. Um, and then all of these little trinkets that do all kinds of different things. Cyclist is just full of a bunch of just random assortments of, of like cool things that you can give you powers in the game. Now let's go ahead and get the crystallized set up. That way we can get that sword made. So this is going to require slime balls. And I did go ahead and move the excess magma into a cask. This is from a uh, cyclic as well. And this is just another way to store fluids. You can just store a little bit inside of a barrel. Great for this little situation where we had some excess left over. Notice that one slime is going to equal 250. So it's going to take uh, four of these in order to make a single bucket's worth. And uh, I don't need a whole lot of this. Ooh, look at it go through the power here. It is really going to take some power in order to get this going. Hopefully we can sustain that. Yeah, you can see that power just completely draining and then all of these are now starting to drain. This does take quite a bit of power per operation in order to run, but we, we should be able to handle it. I just think it's our gates. Our gates just don't have the transfer rate needed. It will, however, push its way through with the tiny little bit of power that it is receiving. And all we need is technically two of these for now. Well, let's go ahead and take our last diamond here and craft this together and we get ourselves a crystal sword. This is going to be the sword that I want to use to fight the Ender Dragon with. Because while this sword is great, its abilities are not going to translate over and its base attack is only 11.5, where this base attack is 14.5, meaning with some strength potions and things like that, and also with max enchants on this, or as max as we can go uh, currently, this is going to be very, very seamless, and it's going to be very high on the attack. So back into enchanting land, we get life leech and fire aspect on this, but these are going to definitely get removed, and uh, we'll see what all we have that uh, is over here in our enchantment library. Now, after looking through all of the enchants that I have available to me, I think I'm just going to stick with basic sharpness, uh, some XP boost, which is always gonna be nice, some life leech and unbreaking for now. Uh, there are a ton of other cool enchants that are available, but uh, for right now, these are all that have rolled. Other ones can definitely be obtained through villagers. So I'm gonna grab this book and I wonder how expensive this is going to be to apply this. Hopefully we have enough levels. We should, we should, we should be uh, just fine. And there we go. This is going to put us at 18 base damage on this sword. Ah, and it's going to be very nice. Ah, yes, remember how I said there's a sort of Enderman invasion going on? Yeah, I think we should go adventuring and see if we can't spot some of those. I think I've spotted a couple. There's one right there, and there's one right here. Ooh, 
Very interesting Enderman walking around. And maybe we can capture one? Maybe. Ooh. And there's also a Piper over here. That's kind of neat. What are you? <laughs> there's also... <laughs> that's a very suspicious looking Enderman. Hmm. I'm thinking we should definitely capture... Ooh, we have some rats that are... Are they after me? They might actually be after me. Oh, we might have to fight some rats. Okay. Well, with all of this, let's take our bag, because I do want to yoink one of these Endermen. I might have to take on these rats. Are you, oh, yep, they're definitely after me. Hey, let's let's not do this today. Be, be, be peaceful. Okay. So these Endermen are just fine. <laughs> He's looking at me. I like your vest and your adventurer outfit. Very nice. But I'm going to yoink the Savannah Enderman. Uh, now, all of these Endermen, they do have different things they can drop. Oh my gosh, dude, the animations on this is so good. That's such a cool, that's such a cool creeper. Is it like passive? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I love that so much. It's like a totem. All right, we've got to find that other Enderman though, because I do want to take it out. And I did remember, I didn't put looting on this sword. Which is probably unfortunate. I'm probably going to need that. Where did that other Enderman go? Oh, but I did manage to find this, which is over here in the savannah biome. And what are you exactly? Get rid of this guy. What is this? Is this some sort of savannah temple? It definitely looks like a savannah temple. Sounds like there's mobs in here. And how do I get inside? Hmm, all of these roof blocks are copper, but I'm going to pop my head in here. Oh, and there is a chest Ooh, with a loot capacitor in it. I will definitely take that loot capacitor. Anything else in here? I mean, all of those mob drops is probably worth taking. Uh, let's break this. Okay, so it's a zombie spawner inside. <laughs> definitely got to be careful. There's some skulls. Ooh, and there's some candles in here. Let me actually lower this down a little bit. I kind of want these candles. Oh, nice, on my way back. Look at this biome, this is just gorgeous. The new cherry blossom trees. Ah, oh, just it's just really pretty. Oh, look at this. Oh, we found one. This is a beekeeper. Yes. I need to mark this spot because this guy has so many bees here and they're all doing their thing. They're all making the honeys. Do you have anything in here? Oh, wow. You have honeycombs. Sorry. I, I'm going to take what's on your shelves. I could totally use these. <laughs> oh, there's even more up here. But my goodness, you see how many bees there were? That's so many bees. Oh, and moo blooms. I love how they actually farm off of the moo blooms. Like they, that's, <laughs> this is so cool. I love this. We're going to definitely need to come back here and check this out. I do want to set up a bee area myself. I, I just wonder how well these guys would stick around this area and not die. My luck with bees have never been the best. <laughs> I best be on my way. Oh, I found myself a pillager encampment. Ah, uh, this would be ripe for the reaping of uh, the good old bad omen. Very cool. Okay, I wonder, I pop up in here. Is there going to be anything nice in here? Maybe a horn? Ooh, some smithing templates. Those are always worth grabbing. Some Indrio steel. And a few jewels, which are always worth taking as well. Oh, I know this guy's here, but there's some malaise that are, are stuck here. Oh and, a, oh, and an iron golem. I want to leave the allays here for now because I don't want to accidentally lose them. Oh, but I do want to get an allay. Oh, eventually. Because we could put these in uh, jars from Ars Nouveau, and they do have spe special operations that they can perform inside of the jars. Definitely going to be a comeback to you. I, I promise I will free you. I, I promise. I will. I will come back. I just give me some time. I think I've found another one. And it is right there. 
Ooh. Did I look at it? Oh, I did. Okay. It's after me. But this guy should drop or have the chance of dropping a, a different material. So uh, this is another sustainable way of farming different blocks. If you can get these mobs and you can find a way to farm them, you could have unlimited snowballs and many other things that these guys can drop. I think overall the Enderman overhaul mod is definitely perfect in this pack. Now back to figuring out why exactly they're invading. Um, I think it's going to require a bit more research. Now, as I killed that last Enderman, I heard a little whisper saying that I should make some Eyes of Ender to find the portal to the end. And making these Eyes of Ender is all great. We're gonna need them to access it, but we could make a solid Eye of Ender. And this thing right here should allow us to not use up our Eyes of Ender that we'll ultimately need for the portal but instead we can use these, use this eye to locate the stronghold by doing this, right? So we now have a reusable eye that should hopefully show us what direction it looks like off in this direction right here. So yes, this has 256 uses. I think that's plenty for finding a stronghold. Um, I mean, the, the place that uh, that Enderman whispered to me. Um, yeah. Now let's go off in that direction here and let's see if we can't potentially find a stronghold. That'd be really nice. Oh, one thing before I, I do all of this. You know what? I should probably upgrade my backpack. That way when we get to the stronghold, we can loot every little bit of it. Let's check out our supply and see how many diamonds we have. Oh, we have 31 diamond blocks and now this has been coming from our industrial foregoing miner as we've been working on building all of this stuff uh and then i went ahead and made a fortune pickaxe so we should be able to fortune all of this and that should be quite a few diamonds perfect i say quite a few but really it starts to feel like nothing when you go to upgrade your backpack and things like this so that takes quite a bit and those diamond upgrades also require quite a bit as well so just upgrading this alone gives us a ton more space. The more space, the better. Oh, very nice. Well, I was heading in this direction just to do a quick check again. Yes, it is in this direction and I don't have to wait for it to fall or anything. Ah, oh, this reusable ender pearl is nice. Oh, look at my little journey. Look what I, I heard a noise. I was like, what is that? Look at this little fella. This could have been a mob that was voted for the mauler. Oh, he's so cute. What does he do when you hit him? <laughs> he comes after you. No, I don't want to kill him. He's so cute. I mean, honestly, this would have been a very weird thing, but this was the concepts that was around. Like this would have been one of the concepts, I think when we chose the phantom and I am almost kind of glad we chose the phantom over this thing. I mean, how often would you even interact with this thing? I must be getting close because this did make a turn. And once it's made a turn, you know that you're very close to the stronghold. So it's got to be somewhere inside of this valley area. It's what it's looking like. It's somewhere down here, somewhere down below here. Let's see. It's pointing me in this direction, but when I was up here, it was pointing me over here. Aha, it is right down below. Yes, it is right down here. So let's get our break spell. And well, <laughs> moment of truth. Start breaking away everything. You know, I wonder if digging down in Minecraft, if that sort of meme has changed over the years, because I feel like it's become a little less dangerous digging straight down due to, well, just our ability uh, to learn and we've learned different strategies for getting down. I don't feel like it's as danger dangerous anymore. I mean, just using this strategy alone should guarantee that you stay relatively safe. And for the stronghold to be down here, it really does feel like this thing is really far down. Wait, Skulk, did that Enderman lead me astray? Oh my god. No way. 
Oh! This is an ancient city. I thought this was taking me to a stronghold. Is there a stronghold and an ancient city? Right on top? There's no way. Oh, I, I am not ready for that, I don't think. There's, there's got to be a stronghold here, though. Oh, okay. Um, maybe if I stare up? Because I, I, this, this cannot, this cannot be it. Like, th this isn't leading me to an ancient city, right? It's leading me to a stronghold. Supposedly. <gasps> yeah, there's a stronghold right here. But it's also an ancient city? I don't... I Is that even possible? I mean, it, it, it is possible. We're doing it right now. It's overgrown. I am blown away right now. I mean, I still want to explore this and try and loot as much as I can out of this. Th there's the portal. Oh my gosh. Okay. So we have access to the portal right there. I, I know where this is at now. I'm going to go ahead and mark it with some lights. So that way I know how to get back by placing the lights on the right side. But what? The fact that that exists down below blows my mind. I'm, I'm just completely taken back. <laughs> An ancient city? Oh, wow, look at this. Look at this little guy. We could have voted for this thing. He's holding an enchanted book. Hello. Be beheading? Oh. And he disappeared. <laughs> that, that wasn't sinister at all. Giving me an enchanting book of beheading and then teleporting away. Oh, oh good. He's right there. <laughs> this is kind of weird, though. All right, what do we have? Ooh, an eye armor trim. And sharpness. Oh, this is why we made our backpack so large so we could fit all of these new goodies in here. Yes, please. That's just, I'm still just blown away that we found an ancient city at the same place that our end. What the, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. Like in other worlds, it has taken me a long time to find an ancient city and for it to just be underneath this. I feel like the luckiest person in the world right now. I can't let that get to me. I've got to get this stuff looted. Oh man, no enchanted book there. We did a potion of mana regen. And you know what? I will take these books. I will take them. And you know what? I might as well take all the bookshelves as well. I bet this guy's like, what are you doing? <laughs> this golem is, I'm sorry, man. I, I might, might have cleared out the entire area. He's like, that was my life's work collecting. Now this has to be the one of the smallest little dungeon areas I've seen. Like uh, it just it dead ends everywhere. I think it's because of the ancient city being here. It takes precedent over it. Cuz this is it. It was one library and then one then the portal. And that's it. That that's it. Let's put the eyes in. I I can't go just yet. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent fully prepared, but I can set everything else up except for one eye for now. Goodness. I'm thinking for now, until I can get a portal because I forgot to bring a scroll, I'm just going to go ahead and get a hole dug through the roof right here. And uh, I'm going to use this as a way to get back after setting a waypoint. So now with this fully dug out, we have a way to just immediately drop down. Well, that is until we get ourselves a scroll and we get it linked up. So after nabbing my scroll, it's time to head back. And I've got to travel all the way back there. So I'll just head down here and this is going to give me access though to more than just this stronghold. I'd, I don't even know what, what to think. I'm still kind of just flabbergasted by all of this, but we'll go ahead and set this for now. And now this location's stored. And all I have to do is change it, go back to the base, and then set it, and we're, sh we're good to go. So I'll make sure to set my home portal. Let's even just clear this out for now. 
making it a little easier for me to get my home portal in. Will it place in here with the blocks? No. So I do have to clear out the roof a little bit. Perfect. And then we can just head back home as soon as I figure this out. I'll get it eventually. There we go. And <laughs> it takes up so much space. <laughs> Perfect. Back home we go. Oh, there we go. This is so much better. And finally, we have ourselves an end portal scroll. <laughs> it looks like also the end of our anvil. Oh, but with that, we are now finished with today's episode. And I hope you guys did enjoy. I'm looking forward to next episode as I'm excited to get this dragon fight because it does open up a ton of new things for us, including access to better gear, better armor. We're going to get some armor upgrades and be able to get into ours elemental with that gear. It's going to get a little mental, but I hope you guys are, in, are ready for that. And if you are, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. It's now time to think the amazing supporter of today's episode. Oh no, and just in time for a tiny moon and <laughs> it's affecting everything. The tiny moon is, is keeping me on the ground, but also look at it. It's pushing, the, <laughs> it's pushing everything down. All items, everything. That's hilarious. But yes, that amazing thanks is going to go to um, Al, uh, Alec. Yeah, Alec. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way. Over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. I thank you guys so, so very much for watching, and I'll hope to see you in the next one. And as always, yet again, thanks for watching. Bye!